What's going on guys? We've been talking about configuration management and in this video we're going to cover the very very basics of Ansible. I'm starting with Ansible, we'll probably do some puppet videos as well. I've used both in production and uh, most recently Ansible. It's got a couple of advantages, uh, especially for the beginner I think. First off, Ansible is just easier to get started with. It uses no agents that run on the target machines and there's no client server thing that you've got to set up. It just does everything over SSH so basically every machine you're ever going to administer has SSH installed already. This means that most of your prerequisites are done. Ooh, nice we can see an error there. We're gonna debug that in a second. Ansible can scale. It's not sort of bound um, or bottlenecked by SSH so you can do a tremendous amount of machines in parallel and it's written in Python so all these things together I think make it a good place to start you can keep things very simple and just learn the concepts while still having something that's actually useful that you can work with right away I just wanted to do a very very quick tour of Ansible sort of an Ansible in 10 minutes kind of thing just to give you an idea of what this looks like in practice so first off get used to seeing <laughs> Errors. Your basic workflow is going to be writing configuration files, so working on the uh, the configuration itself, and then testing it by running it against the test machine and seeing a lot of these green things, some of these yellow things, and a whole bunch of red. And your job is to get the red to become green. Let's just quickly look at a, an Ansible project. So here I've got an Ansible project open. The folder structure <laughs> It's meant to be convenient for big projects, and it is. For small projects, it can feel a little bit overbearing, but this is going to make sense in a second. Just so you can quickly see. So this is a fairly small project, just to give you an idea of the folder structure. Basically, you've got one directory that holds your variables, then a single file, your hosts file where you've got all of the different machines that are going to be configured in there you can group them into different named groups it makes it easy to say you know do this just to the web servers okay but do this to all the servers on and on your roles where the actual configuration lives and so you can have several roles we just have a common role here because this is very simple we just have a single type of host and we're going to apply only the common configuration to it. You could also have like, you know, a web configuration or a database configuration that does those specific tasks like, okay, we're going to install Postgres. Each of these roles in turn has files that are simply copied to the uh, target machine. Handlers, which are things like restarting services, they're very, very simple. You're going to want to abuse handlers by making them more complicated than they're designed to be, but don't. You've got tasks, which is, this is what we think of as the configuration management. I mean, this is where you're like, okay, do this, do that, do this, install these things, run this command. And then templates, which are files that are filled in with variables from your group vars. In practice, this is really nice. Um, for very small projects, this structure feels a little bit overbearing. You always have that sort of feeling like, Jesus, you know, I could write this in a single text file and it would still be nice but it's nice that it forces you to do this for small pro well you, you can escape this structure but I think you should use this even for small projects because small projects have a habit of growing into large projects and if you already have this stuff kind of separated out into the structure of okay this is one role oh I'm gonna add web stuff now well I'll put my nginx config in and all my files and handlers and tasks and templates for nginx over into the web server role and so on. It, it forces you to keep things really easy to access for other people and really easy to find. And I know if you've listened to my other videos about why I even do configuration management, then it's fairly obvious that I'm huge on the documentation front. Like I'm a big fan and configuration management itself, I think should be a type of documentation so that you can sit a new sysadmin down and say, Hey dude, well, read about how we configure a web server and then you'll pretty much know what's going on on one of these web servers. So this forces you to keep your documentation structure, essentially, your configuration management structure consistent, which means a new person, as long as they're familiar with Ansible, can sit down 
look at this and know what's going on immediately. Okay, so here we are in the very first file. I just uh, pasted an example from the, um, from the official Ansible docs here. You can get fancy with this, so you can group servers. I'm just calling this test hosts right now, so I can add some later that I want to configure. But basically, there's only a single IP in here. It doesn't even have a name in DNS. You can do, if you have a larger file, you would, this would be your group, this would be another group, and this would be something that gets run even when a specific group isn't called. But again, these are commented out. This is basically just like bash or Python, so this is means it's commented and ignored. And this is my single little lonely LXC container that we're configuring here. So that's the hosts file. It's very on, on, on the outside. Here, let me close these and make this a little more. Here's the basics playbook. So it's basically just configuration management instructions for some task. And the playbook has this host file and now the site.yml. It's a YAML configuration file. It's like a super simple syntax. It starts with three dashes, begins the configuration file. And you can see here, the only role we're interested in configuring here is all the test hosts, which is just that one IP. We're going to use the root user to log in and do stuff because this is all running over SSH. You can see we could sudo to another user or, uh, sorry, sudo to root or use another user on that system, but we're not going to do that. And we're just running a single role here. Let's look very quickly at the group vars file. So these are all the variables basically that you would configure before running this on a machine or a group of machines. And I've just done this for demonstration. This is really just for, and I'll add this, SSH configuration file variables. So I've created a variable here that has the port number, so you could change this before a run. You could say, oh no, we're going back to the default. The permit root login directive in the SSH key file. The pub key authentication or in password authentication. I've just pulled out a couple variables. And I'll show you how those work in a second. So those are my variables, and now we start the roles. Now on a larger project, you'll have many roles, but for a simple project, you just have the common role. Let's take a look at that. So a role consists of files, which are simply copied from A to B. We don't have any of those. Handlers, which are very simple tasks. I'll show you in a second. The tasks file, which is the main configuration area and then your templates, which are basically halfway between five, they're, they're files that have variables. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. You see these variables here? This uses the Python Jinja2 templating engine, which means I can do things like this. Instead of this saying port, whatever, I, this is just a copy pasted SSH config file. Instead of having to say 22 in here and then using awk or sed or something to modify this on the machine, I can simply use this as a, use the Jinja syntax here to say, please go into the group vars directory and find me the sshd port variable. And it says, okay, great, I'm gonna go do that. And there it is, so 443. And then it basically just inserts 443 here. Nice and easy. Um, you can get a little fancier with this, but we're going to keep it very simple. So just simple variable substitution here. So you can see for the permit root login thing, I have another, hey, Jinja, insert a value here, if there is one, and on and on. Obviously, it needs all these values, and if I put a junk value in in the configuration file like this, I'm going to have a problem when I try to restart SSH because this is not an acceptable value for password authentication. Okay, but that should basically explain the variables file, group vars, all, how templates work, and that really leaves handlers and tasks. Now, a handler is a good example of a very, very, very simple task. It has a name, a task has a name, and the task itself. In this case, it uses the service module to restart a service, so it says, my name is restart sshd and the thing I do is I look for the service named ssh and I try to run a restart on it 
if that exists. So that's really what you're dealing with, tasks. So Ansible is basically, the way you'll be using it is playbooks are simply collections of tasks split into different roles. So let's look at the main task file. This is really where you're going to do most of the work. Again, simple YAML file, so you've got these three minus signs or hyphens. This thing has a name again, and you can see it uses the apt module, and this is one of the things I was bitching about before because I like to just have the abstraction called package and have it figure out, you know, if that's apt or if that's package, you know, on FreeBSD or if it's yum or if it's something else. I don't want to have to deal with that. Maybe I'll write a module for that. Who knows? So I'm basically just saying update the package cache, which really actually just means uh, all I'm doing is apt get update, right? We're going to install tmux because we love tmux. We're going to install zshell and we're going to install the OpenSSH server. Now, this is kind of a weird way of doing it because this is for installing a single package. You can install multiple packages like this. So we'll just install, I don't know, Python dev stuff just for fun. And you can see we use this syntax. You can really just copy and paste this and use it for whatever to install multiple packages. So this will take these three packages. This is silly because... <laughs> Ansible needs Python installed anyway to run, so this, if this runs, Python is already installed, but we don't care about that. It's just demonstrating a point here. So each of these things is substituted here, right, using the same Jinja templating. So this just becomes apt, you know, Python state present. Okay, that runs. Then it becomes apt Python dev state present, and then Python virtual env state present. So this is just a way of condensing. If, if you're installing 40 packages, this is a much easier syntax to deal with. And you can see we've got another module here, the user module. That's for obviously managing users on your system. And you can get pretty fancy with this. Uh, I'll give you an example in a second, but this is the most simple way of doing this. We're simply creating a user and we're having the shell be the uh, bin bash would be the default anyway. The name, it means things like the home directory is automatically created. That's the default. It means things like the group is automatically created and named the same thing as the user and the UID and group ID are automatically simply taken as the next available one. You're not specifying. You can, you can get fine grained with this. I mean, you can say, I want a user with UID 2302 and I want the default shell to be here and I don't want you to create a home directory and like in this example, which I kept, I want this person to be, if you didn't have the append yes, you, this would mean only in the groups, admins and developers. If you add the append yes, it means whatever groups you all, you're already part of, in this case, Dave, and please append to that the groups, admin, admins and developers. So just to give you an example, you can, a lot of these modules have extra options you can use and other stuff. And it's all in the modules documentation for Ansible. But that's not the point. We're just running through this as quickly as possible. Okay, running individual commands. This is another module. So this is literally just passing a command to a shell. So this starts a shell session somewhere and then passes a command that's run on that shell. In this case, change shell, because we just installed Z shell. We are going to... <laughs> And that was the bug before. Um, the username goes at the end here. So the command is change shell to the shell user bin z shell for the user Dave. So this simply updates the shell for the Dave user. And since we want to show how templating works, um, we're just going <laughs> to... Can you tell where I pasted this from? <laughs> um, I was working on an Nginx project and then this came with me. So we're going to copy the configuration file over using those variables that I talked about. And the, the syntax for that is the template module. Pretty straightforward, right? We're talking about templates. Well, that's the thing in here with the variables that have been replaced. Well, we give it a source file, which is this config file here. 
it automatically will look in the templates directory. And a destination on the machine that's being configured, so this will be on the remote server that we're talking to, or my LXC machine here. And we're saying, please just put this file here. That's where this goes. And the notify thing is something that we use to fire a handler. And what that means is in this handlers directory, you've got the different handlers. Where we pass the handler name here. So we say, please notify the handler named restart SSHD. So if you remember in the handler file, this is simply called restart SSHD. Those things have to match up. And what that does is it makes a call to service and restart it. And what, what the handlers do is basically you could simply paste that code from the handler in here, but then it would run every single time that you do it. You don't want that. You actually just run, want to run that once after you change the config file. And that's one of these principles that Ansible tries to be idempotent. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but whatever that is, idempotent, idempotent, whatever. It tries to be that and kind of goes out of its way to make it easy to have it be possible to run the same configuration script once or 50 times and not break anything and not do anything weird and not restart services a million times. So the way the handlers work is you basically make a separate handler and then notify it only for the cases where you're actually changing something that requires a restart of a service or something like that. Okay, let's try running this bad boy again now that we've hopefully fixed all the bugs. Um, that's right. Okay, let's have a go. Oh, running the playbook. So you change directory to the um, the playbook directory that you're in. So to the same thing as site YML. And then you run ansible-playbook i hosts your host file or list and the site configuration. Let's see if this works again. Um, at the moment, it requires just a couple of things. Um, it requires Python installed on the remote machine. That's all it really needs. And you obviously need SSH running. Generally, it's best to obviously have SSH running with keys. That's the best case scenario anyway. But if you don't, Ansible is going to scream and you're going to have to pass an extra argument called it's dash dash ask dash pass. So we're not using keys. Ask me for the password, the SSH login password for the user. Uh, and for that, you'll need an extra package installed on your management machine um, SSH pass. So I recommend you just install Python and set up SSH keys so you can log in with a key on the machines that you're going to manage. Most of the time it's going to be done anyway uh, in any real environment. But again, there's this other way with SSH pass and ask pass when you run Ansible. And we're running, we're running, we're running. So you can see it's going through those tasks right now, one by one, and the way that we named them, they're coming up here. And it actually just made it all the way through, so that was the only bug we had. So this is the output. It shows you what host it's happening on. The green means nothing is changing. The yellow means something has changed. And it always has the action name above. So you can see there was already a Dave user on that machine, but now that user's default shell has been changed to Z shell. You can see that SSHD should have had its config file changed and had its port changed to 443 and then been restarted. Okay, so that's basically how it looks when you run configuration management playbooks with Ansible. So those are collections of tasks. You can, I've just run it on one machine, but you could run this the same way on a hundred machines. The nice thing is, if anything ever changes on that machine, I can just run this again and I'll see here what changed and then what was changed back. But that's a very simple look at something that's really complicated actually. And this is probably the fastest way I've found to get into it.
If this is helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. There's going to be more about configuration management and we'll also cover some other configuration management tools. I've been playing with SaltStack a little bit lately, but in production I've used Ansible and Puppet. See you in the next video.